So let's talk about Rodney McQuay and this piece of shit who was just stabbed in jail. If you don't know who this piece of shit is, before I get into what happened to him in jail and how he was stabbed in the face and the neck and the back running for his life like the coward he is, let me give you a little background on what brought him to jail and why you always listen to the kids. No matter what, you go to war for those kids. There is no what if, what if, it doesn't matter. There shouldn't have to be kids dying for there to be policy changing. Anyway, so about a year prior to this incident, the kids were taken from this piece of shit, Rodney McQuay. They were being beaten, just tortured, just a real piece of shit. He was beating the kid's mother and DCF came and took them and the mother went to Maryland where she kept the three kids. None of the kids were older than five years old. So what does this dude do? He goes to Maryland, beats the mother, kidnaps the three kids and brings them to Georgia. Now you would think automatically child protective services in whatever city or state you're in the fbi the police would all be ready to just storm on that house not at all multiple complaints from neighbors from people that even watch the kids and guess what child protective services knock on the door no one answers they have to call 911 requesting that a police officer come there these three kids have been missing. Nobody has seen them. The mother is begging for help. Neighbors and people that are familiar with this case are begging them to go in that house. But of course, they just sit around going back and forth. Finally, an officer arrives around 12 at midnight and says, nobody answered the door, nothing we can do. Ultimately, as time goes on, they find out the house of horrors that these three children were living in. This piece of shit, this demonic fucking piece of shit, had these three little babies in a decrepit duplex in Georgia where he barely fed them. They found rotted eggs and milk. None of them were potty trained, so you can do the math with that. And he kept cameras that had CCTV to his phone where he would watch them in this little area of the duplex that he had chained off. Ultimately, one of the little kids, Treasure, a four-year-old, died from obvious neglect, abuse, and starvation. She was 27 pounds when they found her. The other two children barely made it. By the grace of God, they survived. And it goes to court and everybody's saying, what the fuck? How does a guy go and kidnap three kids bring him across state lines after beating the shit out of his wife and even his wife's daughter that was his stepdaughter at the time go to a house in georgia that they know the kids are at and they just knock on the door multiple times nobody comes with any officers nothing and they just say well he didn't answer the door you got child protective services calling 911 to see if they can meet them there all they had to do was call the special victims unit and they would have kicked in that door because that is policy in all states. But like we see time and time again, you must believe your kid. Whether you're law enforcement, whether you're a parent, you go to a war for your kid. They will convince you that you're wrong. Everybody will say, oh, she's crazy. He's crazy. Oh, don't believe him. But if you know in your hearts of hearts something's not right, you go to war. You kick in that door. Because imagine if those officers would have came there five days earlier. Shit, a month earlier. It would have saved her life and so much other just torment that those kids went through. But of course, now they're saying they're going to change the policies. It's always like that, right? It always takes a little innocent child to die. And this guy has a history of domestic violence. A history of abuse on children. And they're like... You know, he just didn't answer the door after kidnapping and beating his ex-wife, the mother of those children. And the officer shows up at midnight and says the same thing. Policy states, if DCF or Child Protective Services cannot get a hold of anybody, they contact the Special Victims Unit when it involves a child's safety and they kick in that door and they locate that child and they bring him to safety or her to safety. That's why you see so many people that go through the system and, and, and they just can't believe it. They cannot believe that no matter how much they show, no matter how much abuse, no matter what they do, 
they say it's not good enough. And the only time it's good enough is when a child dies. Then they say, oh, well, now it's time to look at the protocols. Fuck that. Go to war for your kid every time. It's fucked up. And that's the system. It's almost designed to push a parent to the edge after they do everything legally. And they're showing this person has a history of domestic violence, a history of abuse, a history of so much. And he just kidnapped the kids. And it's not a money thing or that he wanted to bring them into a better life. Oh, no. The man was working two jobs and still starved them, still kept them in a decrepit place. So he did this out of pure evil with a history of escalating violence, kidnapping. And they still say we're not going to kick in the door. No one's answering. Bullshit. That's what pushes parents to the edge or police, whatever it may be. When they see so much injustice happening to these kids and you see a guy like Cain Velasquez, you know, it, how, how long can somebody go through that? So anyway, let's get to the situation that occurred in the jail in Georgia. So as we know, Rodney is a piece of shit and a coward. And in jail and prison, anything can happen. There is no such thing as time, only opportunity. You live in a world where it doesn't matter what happened. It only matters what they want to happen. So the way the police report was written, and this is the first time I've ever seen somebody get charges for what he did, is Rodney, the coward who starved his four-year-old daughter, walked into another man's cell with a shank or a knife in his hand. Immediately, the guy in the cell started beating the shit out of Rodney because he's a coward took the shank from him, started stabbing him in the face, the neck, the collarbone, and Rodney turned away, started running where he got stabbed multiple times in his back because he's a coward. He's screaming for the officers to help him, as all these cowards do. You didn't want to answer the door to save your own child's life, but now you want these officers to save your life. Typical fucking demonic coward. Dude's still hitting him with the blade over and over until finally, about 10 minutes later, of him getting chased and stabbed in the back and bleeding out, an officer finally comes to help him. Now, this is what makes prison and jail so treacherous, is Rodney, the coward, was arrested for outside charges for causing violence in an institution, a riot, and I think aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. And the guy who stabbed him got a verbal warning. You could read between the lines and understand that. You don't know where it comes from, whether it's the parents, families, or just somebody in the system that is one sees evil like that. And just like you and me would see on TV and say, oh, if I have five minutes alone with this dude, well, they have 24 seven alone with that dude. And the officers, how do you think they feel seeing an evil motherfucker that let a four-year-old starve to death, his own kids? Well, not only did his ass get stabbed the fuck up and went to intensive care, and has life-threatening wounds, but they hit him with more outside charges to guarantee they show a history of more violence. I've been in prison. I grew up, unfortunately, in the Department of Corrections in Florida, and I've never heard of somebody getting an altercation, them getting stabbed, and them getting outside charges. But when you do evil stuff and you're a coward, this will be your reality for the rest of your life. Fortunately, it has to be in the prison systems, in the jails, with men who have been through this shit as they were kids or seen their family members go through the system and know exactly what happened. Or family members might put a hit on somebody, whatever it may be. But unfortunately, the only justice we get is from the murderers, the drug dealers, the armed robbers. And they know that the system will always fail you. It'll fail your kids, it'll fail you if they went through it as a youngster. And the more you report, the more they take away from you. Always listen to your kids. And if you got a kick in that door, then fucking do it. Deal with the consequences later. Because nobody else is going to protect your kid but you. When they go to jail and prison, that's the only true justice they're going to get. Because unfortunately, the only moral compass is from killers, gang members, drug dealers. I'm not excusing what they did. But one thing they never did was beat women rape women, hurt kids. So that just shows you that a man who committed an evil shooting looks at a person who hurts children like the worst of the worst and gets that justice. Stay out, stay free. Us.